This is the story of a season to remember for Middlesbrough Football Club. In his very first season in charge, manager Lenny Lawrence celebrated one of the club's most successful campaigns ever. It ended in high drama as Borough secured a place in the new Premier League in nail-biting fashion on the final Saturday at Molyneux. Trailing 1-0 and down to 10 men, it needed a brave second-half fight back to land the second division's all-important runners-up prize. A thrilling conclusion had provided a happy ending to a season of great excitement at Essen Park. Two memorable cup runs had raised expectations for a glorious finale. In this official club video, we'll be reliving the magic moments from an action-packed season, enjoying once again the goals and the classic games from both the league and the cup competitions. The big kickoff came at Ayrson Park against Millwall, the side managed by former Borough boss Bruce Rioch. A winning start for new manager Lenny Lawrence was followed four days later by defeat at the baseball ground. Randy Coman gave Derby County the lead on the hour. Six minutes later, a glorious finish from Mick Harford completed a 2-0 win for one of the sides destined to push Borough all the way in the race to join the Premier League. Next came a tough encounter with the side set to top the season's first league table. Was there? A great goal! That's oh, a great goal by Goddard! Working it with Musto. Wilkinson. Even trying to get something. Oh, Wilkinson's there and Wilkinson scores! Paul Wilkinson had scored his first goal since his summer signing from Watford. But two defeats out of three hadn't been the start expected of a side with promotion ambitions. A storming sequence in Borough's next six matches would remedy that situation, starting with the best possible tonic against rivals Newcastle. That was really well won by Robbie Musto, and Wilkinson has looped that ball down for Henry to give chase, who will just about keep it in as well. Henry uh, support, Gary Parkinson coming up here, chance for Parkinson now, whips it across the face of that Newcastle goal. Good effort from Parkinson. So the free kick uh, hoisted down the left, and here's Paul Wilkinson inside that Newcastle area. 1-0, Paul Wilkinson. Excellent strike, perfect positioning, and perfectly finished off by Wilkinson. So Middles were coming down the left this time, and Ripley, there's nobody quicker than him. It needs a good cross in. It was a good ball, just eluded Henry. And Henry's still here, might get another chance, a second bite at the cherry, oh, super stop by Srinicek, flipped over the top, a really good save from the Czech. So this is Henry now, strong on the ball as always, and elusive as well, he's got support in the middle if he can cut it across, that's a good ball, a shot from Proctor, and Proctor's in for the follow-up as well, his first of the season, and Mark Proctor profits at the second attempt. Nice little bit of interplay here, Wilkinson switching the play out wide, looking for Ripley to get that ball across, and here's the header down, and a simple goal for Willie Falconer, and Srinicek all at sea with that one, and Falconer punishes him, 3-0 Borough. Borough too strong in every department for their northeast rivals, and not surprisingly confidence was high for the home encounter with Portsmouth, managed by former Newcastle boss Jim Smith. It's a fine run by Parkinson and a good deep cross as well. And a good build up this one again by Bills, where Hendry denied by Knight's boot. So close. And now from Ripley. The ball transferred by the substitute Slaven, and Bernie Slaven takes up a good, intelligent position. The ball's going to come back to him off Beresford. They get the second chance to cross it in. And here a chance at the back post for Falconer. And for the second match in succession, it's Willie Falconer. 
The longer ball this time aimed by John Beresford down the middle and here's a chance for Aspinall the substitute. Pez had to be alert and he was a really good stop from the Middlesbrough keeper. Again it's down the right that Berra come and this is Ripley. And he's got time and he's got space and there are men in the middle waiting for the cross. It has to be a good one. Slaven, perfection! After missing the start of the season with a hamstring injury, Bernie Slaven had made a triumphant return. It wasn't enough to earn him a place in the starting lineup at Oxford, but that didn't stop Borough's super sub once again making his presence count. Three minutes from time, and marked in a six-yard box, Slaven broke the deadlock. In the dying seconds, his third goal in two games wrapped up the points when he broke three down the middle. Oxford would still find time for a late consolation, but Slaven had fired Borough to the top of the table. Two summer signings from Watford had played a key role in Middlesbrough's early search to the top. And both men would underline that fact on their return to Vicarage Road. Paul Wilkinson, destined for his best season in front of goal, opened the scoring against his former club midway through the first half. Ten minutes later, his former Watford teammate Willie Falconer made it 2-0. And that was three goals apiece in their first seven matches for Borough's new boys. Joe McLaughlin would give Watford a late consolation. Nonetheless, table-topping Borough had made it four straight wins. The stage was set for a crunch encounter with second-place Leicester City. Brian Little's informed side arrived at Essen Park with a proud unbeaten record and with two games in hand. It's a good long throw from James and the first chance of the game really from Leicester City's point of view. And Pears getting down well. He had to do. So this is Slaven for Middlesbrough. They've sought for a goal for over 70 minutes. None has been forthcoming. What about now as Ripley crosses it? Deep, a good chance here, and Slaven's in on it! And at long last, the defence has been breached. 1-0 to Borough, Bernie Slaven. So Phillips will leave it for Ripley this time. And a swing it in round about the penalty spot, and Wilkinson's risen above the keeper. Disappointing goalkeeping from Poole and Wilkinson makes it 2-0 and Borough surely home now. Well, they're really on song now, Borough, and again Ripley the tormentor here as he's twisting and turning and swinging that ball over. Wilkinson at the back post! Has it crossed the line? It has! 3-0, Wilkinson second. The season was only one month old, but Borough had opened up a five-point lead at the top. Next on stage were Tranmere Rovers. Like Leicester City, the Merseyside has arrived defending an unbeaten record. And like the men from Filbert Street, they couldn't dent Borough's perfect home record. It was a run that couldn't go on forever but it came to an end against the Plymouth side beaten in their three previous matches. The upset began when Adrian Burroughs gave the home side the lead to crown an impressive first half display. Argyle could have made it 2-0 when Martin Barlow failed to convert a penalty soon after the break. But Borough came storming back to claim the point they fully deserved. The equaliser that always looked on the cards was served up by Slaven, and Paul Wilkinson applied the finish. The sixth goal of the season, keeping Borough five points clear at the top of the second division. <laughs> Round two of the Rumbelows Cup had landed Lenny Lawrence's men with a two-legged tie with Bournemouth. What would turn out to be a classic cup run didn't look too promising until Paul Wilkinson finally broke the deadlock ten minutes from time. And even then Wembley must have seemed a long way off when Bournemouth snatched a well-earned reply in the dying seconds. Substitute Lawrence leaving Borough with plenty to do in the second leg. Four days later, it was back to league duty, and a crowd of just under 20,000 was at Essen Park 
for the showdown with Sunderland. It produced one of the fastest goals of the season. So what an atmosphere in Ayrson Park for the Derby game. Teesside against Wearside. And uh, straight away that ball is going to be transferred back. Oh, what a ghastly mistake in the present. A goal for Slaven in no more than 17 seconds. Unbelievable. Looked over the top by Phillips for Ripley. He wriggles his way inside and avoids the second challenge. And Ripley threads the ball through Slaven. Could have been two. Will surely be two now. 2-0 for Barra. What a great start. Wilkinson. This is John Kay driving forward for Sunderland now. Here's Davenport. Oh, on the turn and a good stop from Pears. Pears clearance, won by Bennett. Then uh, Proctor gets a little nudge in the back. It doesn't seem to matter. Rush has played it to through. Armstrong now. And uh, Armstrong to Davenport. He might have a crack. He does. So he's unlucky. Should have scored against his old team there. That ball played down towards John Hendry, who tussled for it with Hardiman, and they're still tussling and still going on. And the referee, Robbie Hart, is going to intervene here. Well, the Sunderland left back, Paul Hardiman and John Hendry, in a bit of an altercation. There didn't really look to be a lot of harm done. Just one of those incidents where they got in each other's way a little bit. But referee Hart is going to take action, and it's a red card for both of them. Uh, just 18 minutes left, still 2-0, Burra in the lead, here's a good flick on though, and Brady is taking up a really good position, here's a chance, beautifully done, gloriously struck by Kieran Brady. At Twerton Park, Burra are up against a rock-bottom Bristol Rovers side without a manager, following the sacking of Martin Dobson. It looks like being plain sailing with an own goal by Yates gives Burra the lead. The Rovers are handed a lifeline, and Stuart Ripley is sent off midway through the second half. Seven minutes later, Rovers cash in with the equaliser, when Reese applies the finish. Then, in the dying minutes, ten-man Borough are left empty-handed, and Jeff Twentyman fires home Rovers' winner. With second place, Ipswich Town continuing their winning run. Borough's lead at the top has been cut to a mere two points. Meanwhile, in the Rumbelow's Cup, it's part two of the second round tie with Bournemouth. It was almost a repeat of the first leg. Borough once again taking the lead, this time John Henry making the breakthrough much earlier. His opening strike coming in the 23rd minute. Just as they'd done in the first encounter, Bournemouth hit back with a late equaliser. Quinn, the home side's hero. That sent the time to extra time, and a penalty shootout was just three minutes away when Rowland brought down Henry. Up stepped Gary Parkinson, and the Borough fullback made no mistake to book a place in round three. High-flying Wolves arrive at Ayrson Park with the best away record in the second division. The outcome is a goalless draw and the end of Borough's 100% home record. This is Pollock, the one he's going to forehand for Wilkinson. Oh dear, missed his kick completely. Ripley's corner then. Middlesbrough still looking for a way through this Wolves defence which is standing firm so far. Oh, a cracking save from Stowell. Still they come, still they look for this first goal. The ball is good across the area. Slaven came to him too quickly. Ripley again has showed some neat footwork, and there's a good example of it. The ball in for Wilkinson. Inches over. The Wolves competing for everything as they do again now, but the ball falling for Ripley, and he's turning it on. Wilkinson shots. Oh, style superb. <laughs> Nonetheless, Lenny Lawrence's men are still in pole position. A look at the league table confirms that Borough remain two points clear at the top, but all the chasing clubs have games in hand.
With injuries and suspensions beginning to take their toll, Lenny Lawrence brings in Brian Marwood on loan from Sheffield United for the trip to Grimsby. The Borough are beaten by a late goal from Neil Woods, and that means they've collected just one point from a disappointing run of three matches. It takes a ZDS Cup thriller against Derby County to get Borough back on the right track. It's a good ball in from McMinn, giving Gary Micklewhite the chance, and on the left foot, Micklewhite gives Derby the lead. So again, uh, danger on the edge of this Middlesbrough penalty area, and Micklewhite thumps in the shot, Bears can't hold it. Well, he did it the second attempt. Uh, Bernie Slaven going to run it all the way back, and he's run it too far back. Oh, dear me, what a scary moment for Slaven and for Burra. Fair's clearance, nodded on by Wilkinson. He'll get it back again. He might even try his luck from here. Oh, it's a superb effort. So unlucky there, Wilkinson. Still 2 0 Derby counter there. Middlesbrough needs something now, and here's a promising ball in, and here's Paul Wilkinson. He's found the net. It's in the corner, and Middlesbrough have got one back. Just three minutes left for Middlesbrough to try and take the game into extra time. That was Kernigan going for it there. The ball kept in. They've done well to keep that ball in play, and Wilkinson right is there again. His tenth of the season. 2 2 now. So here from the free kick situation, they look to the trusty boot of Phillips, what a rocket! Jimmy Phillips and Berra in front for the first time. As good a free kick as you'll ever see. Well, unless you're a Derby County fan, you won't mind seeing this goal over and over again. So sweetly struck. So 3-2, Derby coming again, Kernigan's header out. Always the danger that uh, Berra might get another on the break and Slaven sets off from the halfway line. He'll be pursued all the way. Trot on the ball almost. He's still got the chance. Slaven, and that's good enough surely now. Slaven's goal, 4-2. with a header Alan Kernigan putting Borough one up 25 minutes gone the corner coming from Brian Marwood the ball flicked back to Kernigan make it Middlesbrough one Port Vale nil Two minutes of the first half left. But there are still on the edge of that uh, Barnsley area. Ball with Phillips. He's going to get a second chance as well. Keeping it in play. And Barnsley on the back foot once more. This time Phillips uh, will find Wilkinson. And Wilkinson rises and scores. A typical Paul Wilkinson effort. Two minutes from half time. And Burra are in front. Wilkinson planted the header firmly past Lee Butler. And he really is a striker in top form. Paul Wilkinson, 1-0 Burra. So another clean sheet for Steve Pears as Burra go through to the last 16. Barnsley, the eighth team of the season, unable to get on the score sheet at Ayrson Park. The home encounter with South End is the fourth in just 12 days for Middlesbrough. An expensive time for the regulars. It's also the start of a costly run of points dropped. Oh, and I think that one just clipped the upright. Bravely put in there by Jamie Pollock, he really put his head down into that one and here's Slaven, a good chance and uh, the save effected but really Slaven might well have done a little better Ansis corner, swinging in, danger here and the ball's gone through and Brett Angel claims it, goal number eight for Angel Phillips with the free kick and launching himself into it there was Ripley and again Slaven can't quite finish it off Morgan Wilkinson Oh, that's Wilkinson trying to cut it back and Cornwall eventually getting it away. Well, as far as Hendry is brought down and that is a penalty. They'll surround the referee, but no question at all, a penalty kick. And Parkinson, oh, a save from Sansevich, struck his ankle. The corner, 
Middlesbrough still seeking this first goal. It's just not going in for them, and Slaven couldn't swing on it. So here is Ripley. Still Middlesbrough trailing by that one goal to nil, but here's Ripley creating space for himself. Can he finish it? Oh, he can! Superbly struck, and that's a beautiful goal from Stuart Ripley. His first of the season. Phillips getting himself in a bit of a tangle, and Hansen might take it away from him, and that's a really brave save by Pears. Ripley swinging that one across, and uh, Wilkinson nodding it down, and Slaven on the turn, couldn't beat Sanson. Still 1-1, and Hansen slips his marker this time, and whips the ball across, and there's danger here for the Borough goal, a great chance for Tilson! Superb stop by Pears. The trip to Oakwell arrived just seven days after Borough had knocked Barnsley out of the Rumbelows Cup. Not the ideal place to spend Guy Fawkes night, and the damage is done before half-time. Rammel puts the home side ahead, and two minutes later, it's 2-0 to Barnsley. Taggart, the goal scorer. Bernie Slaven sparks a second-half fight back with his first league goal for nearly six weeks. The Borough's reign at the top is just about over after collecting only five points from a possible 18. It's also goodbye to skipper Tony Mowbray. He's off to Glasgow Celtic for £1 million. At the Goldstone ground, Middlesbrough again find themselves chasing the points after conceding the opening goal. Brighton lifted by a terrific strike from their new signing, Mark Gall. The Seagulls had taken the lead inside the first ten minutes, and once again it was the second half before Borough got on the score sheet. The persistent fight back finally paying dividends 18 minutes from time. It took a hotly disputed penalty, referee Paul Durkin spotting a handball incident. The home side didn't agree, but Bernie Slaven settled the argument with his first kick of the game, just seconds after coming on a substitute. While results away from home have done little to boost Borough's promotion hopes, consistency at Ayrson Park has given manager Lenny Lawrence no problems. And the good work is set to continue, starting against the boss's former club, Charlton. Well, the crowd are really making themselves heard here as Middlesbrough come hunting for that elusive goal again. This is Phillips. Hendry now. Plenty of men in the middle if he can deliver a good pass, he has! And it's Nicky Mullen and a first ever league goal for Mullen. Hendry, well he created a good goal for Moen, let's see what he can do this time. Seems to be surrounded by the blue shirts, but he slipped that one through nicely. Here's Paul Wilkinson across and a total miscake. It might still open the way for Bernie Slaven. 2-0. Slaven's the man again. Lenny Lawrence's old side still seeking the breakthrough against his present one as Peak floats this free kick in and it's going to come to Lieber at the back post and Pears showed terrific anticipation to make the stop. Middlesbrough's record signing Andy Payton makes his debut against Bristol City. It takes him just three minutes to make his mark. So Bristol City struggling to get the ball away at the moment. Picked up here by uh, Fleming, who's doing some good covering and coming across there and lays a lovely ball for Andy Payton through on his own. Could mark his debut with a goal in the first three minutes. What a dream start for the signing from Hull City. Andy Payton in three minutes has got the goal. Scott, neat work by him. Bristol City an attractive, fluent side and uh, Jimmy Lumsden has uh, got a side that puts things together well and Andy May did there, but that's a fine stop by Pears. Kernigan's free kick, driven towards the edge of that Bristol City penalty area where it's knocked straight up in the air and again by Shelton. But uh, Ripley still trying to produce something here, Wilkinson with the header, not a lot of strength in it, but he's gone through and Slaven has scored a typical Bernie Slaven goal. May, very much the creative player in this Bristol City side and he's got Terry Connor moving down that right touch line and Connor eluding his marker and whipping that ball across so it's a fine stop from Shelton the danger's still here, Shelton tussling for it again 
clearance picked up by May Shelton couldn't win it Terry Connor now and uh, there's a finely played ball for May and a precise cross from him and they're in trouble and that ball surely has crossed the line and that's a goal for Bristol City from Bob Taylor Osman has couldn't find his man he found Jimmy Phillips instead and it's given Burrow the chance to break here with Ripley he just loves taking them on and he's inside that penalty area very unlucky indeed Ripley still the chance there Wilkinson and threads it through and this might well be a third well that's the second time they've hit the crossbar Slaven turning on it and still it will not go in Ripley's corner then Barrow 2-1 in the lead and here's Slaven looks to make it three and his second goal from no more than three or four yards out well Bernie Slaven's second double of the season has given him five goals in four games it's been a frustrating start for Andy Payton he scored in his debut against Bristol but misses the next four matches with an ankle injury the sequence that begins with Borough's first home defeat of the season Chamir landing the only goal of the game in round three of the ZDS Cup Another new signing, Andy Peake makes his debut in the promotion clash with Blackburn Rovers. First blood goes to Middlesbrough, and a foul on Stuart Ripley ends a penalty two minutes before half-time. Bernie Slaven sends Bobby Mims the wrong way to make it 1-0, with the lead last little more than 60 seconds. Fleming conceding the spot kick at the other end with a foul on right. Mike Newell levels to complete a dramatic end to the first half. The winner comes 13 minutes from time, and it goes to the home side, served up by a corner from Cowans. Borough condemned to another away defeat by the final strike from Mark Atkins, a result that moves Kenny Douglas's side into the top four and leaves Middlesbrough one point behind leaders Cambridge. The first of the season's cup showdowns with first division opposition comes in round four of the Rumbelows Cup. There's a special atmosphere at Ayrson Park for the tie with Manchester City which almost came to a premature end when thick fog descended minutes after the kickoff. No goals but no shortage of incident as Phillips swings this one in and Kernigan rose well and that may well have clipped the outside of the upright. Alan Kernigan so dangerous from these set pieces he rises well and I think that we see this replay will spot that that ball did just flick the outside of the upright, it did. City trying to press forward again but Middlesbrough that red line has held strong in midfield throughout and here they come forward again Ripley couldn't control it still no joy for City there could be for Borough on the break this time here's Wilkinson the perfect ball inside and that's a goal to nil and Middlesbrough have taken the lead and that was beautifully done it's Robbie Musto Well, Wilkinson lays on the perfect pass here. Musto tipping it past Tony Coton. 1-0 to Borough. And Wilkinson will be delighted with his contribution. He could have gone it alone. And Robbie Musto getting into the perfect position. Referee Burns has awarded this free kick to Borough. It's a precarious situation for City to be in. They can't afford to go two down. So it'll be taken by Ripley, and it's going to come to Kernigan at the back post, he's got time here, Kernigan whips in the shot, he's got in now for Wilkinson, and that's 2-0, Kernigan's shot, diverted home by Burris top scorer, goal number 13 of this season for Paul Wilkinson, Kernigan taking much of the credit, it was Ripley's free kick, it was Kernigan's shot, but it's Wilkinson who always seems to pop up in the right place at the right time, who scores? Wilkinson has probably picked up a little bit of the art of goal poaching from playing alongside Bernie Slaven and here he's in the perfect position to ram the ball in from no more than four yards 
Well, City are getting increasingly desperate now. Moments left as Pointed takes the free kick. Straight up the middle, it flicked away from the top of uh, the defender's head. And, uh, might still come for City, but they're still two down in this game. Tussling for it rather desperately, but winning very little at the moment. And Berra trying to break once more. Laid back by Adrian Heath this time. But uh, City, it's been very much an uphill struggle for them throughout this match at Ayrson Park. And it looks as though Borough are going to go through, but here comes City. One last attempt may be, and yes, David White. It's not often he scores with his head, but David White has given City a glimmer of hope here. Three minutes to go, and it's back to 2-1. It may be too late, but Hill's ball in, a flick of the head from White, and a few tremors now for Middlesbrough in the closing moments. So Middlesbrough go through to the quarter-finals for the first time in 16 years. A season of great promise is already fulfilling expectations. But the real target, of course, is winning a place in the Premier League. Seven minutes of the half left, a chance maybe for Wilkinson now, and just when they wanted a goal, he's the man to provide it. Swindon still looking to get back in this side. Glenn Hodler certainly uh, formed them into a very good unit indeed, but now the break is on. And Berra with Slaven on that famed left foot of his. Oh, yes, that's a glorious strike from Bernie Slaven. They love him here at Ayrton Park, and that's why. Well, Swindon still giving it all they've got, but they're two down in this game. They've not really created enough for their front men, but uh, maybe something here now. Fitzroy Simpson will try one with the left foot. What a scorching shot from Simpson. He doesn't score many Fitzroy Simpson, but when he does, they're spectacular. So, Berra, ironically, having been two in front to left, hanging on a bit now as Simpson squares it. Shearer couldn't get to it. Still the chance is there. Berra on the back foot. Shearer's header, and that's 2-2, two -two, and they've clawed their way back level. Letting slip a two-goal lead denies Borough a return to the top of the table. And freezing weather conditions will mean a three-week wait before the next match, the Boxing Day showdown with Newcastle. A bumper holiday crowd of well over 26,000 packing St James's Park. There's plenty of confidence about Borough at the moment as uh, Jimmy Phillips sweeps that ball across and the chance now from Wilkinson. Slaven should score! Well, he usually does from that situation. Still, Borough looking for the goal that would give them a double over their old rivals, and here Tommy Wright has to stretch to make the save. Straight up in the air from Fleming, but Proctor tries to bring some semblance of order to the midfield. Fleming's ball again here, and that's got Wilkinson going through, and the fine save again from Tommy Wright. Newcastle haven't had many chances, they're tussling for it on the edge of that uh, Middlesbrough penalty area again. Now the long ball from Fleming, and this might well catch them out. Where was the Newcastle defence? And Paul Wilkinson must surely get the first of the game. Borough 1, Newcastle 0, and predictably, it's Paul Wilkinson. Is this to be Newcastle's way back in? They trail 1-0, then the free kick uh, coming across towards Hunt. He should have scored. Borough's first away win in the league in more than three and a half months means a return to joint top spot alongside leaders Cambridge and Blackburn. But the final match of 1991 turned out to be a real nightmare. Once Guy Whittingham made an early breakthrough, it was always a one-horse race. Warren Neal, who set the first goal in motion, was once again the architect of goal number two. Darrell Powell applying the finish at the far post. It was all over as the contest six minutes before half-time, when Pairs pulled down Darren Anderton. John Beresford made it 3-0 from the penalty spot, and Burrow were heading for their heaviest defeat of the season. A 25-yard special for Martin Cool. His first goal of the season completed the misery for Borough. Nonetheless, results elsewhere meant there was no real damage done in the race to join the Premier League.
At the halfway mark, Lenny Lawrence's men were still handily placed in fourth position. Only goal difference separating them from top spot, with Blackburn, Cambridge, Ipswich and Borough all on 41 points. Even Portsmouth in seventh place were only two points off the lead. On New Year's Day, it was back to Ayrson Park for a showdown with promotion rivals Derby County. Middlesbrough scored so often from set pieces this season and they're looking for one now. Slaven got a little touch but Moen is claiming it and that's his second of the season. Nicky Moen. Derby and McMinn pointing the way here although Parkinson was in the way. McMinn gets a second chance and he's continued a good run this by the Scott McMinn. Danger here to the Borough goal as McMinn tries to set someone up and here's Martin Chalk. A marvellous moment, his first ever goal. The third round of the FA Cup pairs Borough with a rematch with First Division Manchester City. Victory over the men from Main Road has already secured a place in the last eight of the Rumbelows Cup. A crowd of 21,000 will witness another gripping cup tie. And it's uh, City's turn to come forward now. They'll probably look for the head of Niall Quinn. They find his foot instead. His right boot and volleyed over the top. Well, they really are old adversaries of these. It's the second time they've met this season, of course, and it's Berra sweeping forward this time. That's a lovely ball to Slaven in some space. He turns and checks inside that penalty area. Looks to work it on his favoured left foot. And then the save made look uh, simple by Coton. Again, Quinn is there. He leads the line so well for City. It's Pointer who swings it over this time, and Quinn at the end of it, and Peter Reid has volleyed a goal for City, and the boss has done it all himself. <laughs> Pairs with the long drop out this time. Going towards Ripley, but Keith Curl was in the way there. It comes down again for Ripley, and Stuart Ripley inside that penalty area. Whips the shot wide of the left hand upright. And referee Reed has given the corner, so presumably Coton got the finest of touches. But Stuart Ripley really did well to get in a shot at all there. He was hemmed in, it would appear, inside that Manchester City uh, penalty area. But Ripley still forced the save out of Coton as Middlesbrough come looking for this equaliser and they have a corner kick. So plenty of excitement again at Ayrson Park. These two sides always seem to produce drama and it's Middlesbrough's corner kick swung in with the left boot and uh, up they all go and the ball coming down towards Pointon and nudged through by Wilkinson and Slaven and Ripley has turned it through but there are protests and referee Reid says it's no goal from McMahon this time Pointon Quinn on the chest, he really does do that superbly, oh, and Pez had to make the stop. Great save. Still Borough trail by a goal to nil, and Jimmy Phillips always swings these in with his left foot, and they do create mayhem sometimes in that penalty area, and Wilkinson holds his head in his hands. Another Borough corner, what can Phillips do this time? Kernigan rises, and scores! Alan Kernigan! A dramatic equaliser for Middlesbrough, and it's Alan Kernigan again. He does it so often, and he's done it beautifully this time, rising against the static defence and leaving Coton bewildered. So what an atmosphere here now, it's uh, a quite frenzied finish we're in for, I'm sure, as Curl heads the ball away. Knocked forward again into the space, here's the substitute, Andy Payton. Curl's knocked it down! and Wilkinson has pounced to give Borough their second in two minutes oh it looks as though Middlesbrough might well be snatching victory here Andy Payton had tussled for it under the challenge from Keith Curl and Paul Wilkinson rifles what should be a winner so Middlesbrough looked like beating the old foe Manchester City once more as Peyton gets around the back of Redmond he can really lay on number three here surely now Ripley no off the inside of the upright that would have finished it another glorious cup triumph executed by Paul Wilkinson this time in the most dramatic of circumstances four days later Middlesbrough are back on cup duty this time with a Rumbelows Cup quarter-final tie against third division Peterborough 
conquerors of mighty Liverpool. In front of London Road's biggest crowd for six years, only the woodwork denies Borough victory at the first attempt. This is Hendry going to go at the left flank now. And a touch there from Slaven, and it's free for Wilkinson, a little cheeky back heel. And there's the danger of Bernie Slaven. And sometimes he may go a little bit AWOL from games, but when he turns up in that penalty area, he can be so, so dangerous. The break was so quick. Slaven only needed a little bit of a touch, and that was just the width of a post away, and Wilkinson couldn't capitalise there. That was the closest escape for Peterborough. Slaven out wide. Henry with a cross. And Ripley has hit the bar. I think he got a deflection as the shot came in. And Ripley finding the woodwork the second time that Middlesbrough have done so. Another fast break. Henry's cross. Ripley and it just ballooned up there and onto the bar. It's the usual ploy. Robinson the target. But it's rather overhit. Mullen and Phillips between them. Can get it clear to Ripley. Now can Ripley use his pace? Oh, Sterling doing his bit to keep up with him, but still Ripley's going. Ripley could go all the way here. Opens it up as far as Slaven. And down a great shot in there by Hendry and Barber was sharp to deal with that one, but an impressive build-up that by Middlesbrough. Jimmy Phillips to deliver. Kernahan on the near post gets a flick to it. That one got, came back off the bar. And another narrow escape that Wilkinson was in there. I'll we'll have to have a closer look at that one as Phillips brings the ball away. That was desperately close again for Peterborough though. Phillips with the corner kick in towards the near post, the touch on there. And it, yes, it came back off the bar from Wilkinson. That's the third time Middlesbrough have found the woodwork. After two gruelling cup ties in four days, comes a crucial promotion battle with second-placed Ipswich Town. <laughs> Borough's interest in three competitions would continue, despite erratic away form that was always likely to strike at any time. John McGinley's opening goal at the Den to the queue for another setback. Any doubts about the final outcome ended five minutes from time when Alex Ray secured a home win. Another cold snap will force another three weeks of inactivity. The Borough suffered no ill effects in their long-awaited FA Cup clash with Sheffield Wednesday. The fourth round tie at Hillsborough was the stage for yet another memorable cup drama. One nil Sheffield Wednesday. Well, now he has got 15 goals this season. Left back, uh, Jimmy Phillips supporting the attack well. He's got Musto in support here, number six. Oh, there's Ripley. And Ripley again. And a push by Chris Wood. Smart reactions from Ripley by the England goalkeeper. Good flick on by Wilkinson. Oh, here's Hendry with a great chance. 1-1. One -one. Well taken by John Hendry, he struck that really well, but Sheffield Wednesday's defence will be less than happy with the way they dealt with that. The Wilkinson flick seemed to make them freeze. There's the header on, and I think it's Warhurst that's in trouble there, and he gives Hendry a great chance, which he takes with great confidence. Forward by King, Williams the runner, puts it back well for Hurst, Here's Hart with a great chance, oh, what a good challenge, but it's Palmer. And Hyde. Well, Middlesbrough will break here with Ripley. And there's only one man back, it's Warhurst. And still Ripley makes room for the shot. Oh, it was so close. And that's what the fans honestly want to see. Excitement first at one end, then almost instantly at the other. Side. 
Trevor Francis, the player manager on the far side, was caught there. Made his league debut as a 16-year-old with Birmingham back in the 70-71 season, did Trevor. And it's Kernigan driving it forward for Middlesbrough. And here's Wilkinson. Defender slipped and Wilkinson has scored. And Middlesbrough have taken the lead. They've done what they did in the third round. Come from 1-0 down to lead 2-1. And the man who's brought the second goal to their delighted supporters is Paul Wilkinson. 20 minutes to go. The free kick taken, the flick on. And dear, oh dear, is that Warhurst or Pearson there who got caught? Pearson, I think, this time. It was the captain who got caught. So another night of triumph for Borough fans. Cup football continues to bring the best out of Lenny Lawrence's knockout specialists. Victory over Sheffield Wednesday, earning a place in the last 16 of the FA Cup for the first time in eight years. A great boost for confidence, which kept Borough bubbling in all three competitions. He's clear. Does he, can he keep his head? Yes, he can. The opening goal for Middlesbrough, sweetly done by John Hendry. And really, that's all down to a mistake in the uh, midfield by Simon Mills trying to take on too many when really he didn't have any support and uh, a good through ball from Paul Wilkinson for John Hendry and uh, a comfortable job for a striker really with just the keeper to beat, no pressure at all. Just coming up to the quarter an hour mark of the second half, still Port Vale nil, Middlesbrough one. As Hendry turns, makes his way towards goal. Slides it through, a chance now for Middlesbrough, number two from Robbie Musto, the 23 year old. A lovely finish from him, but it was set up marvellously well and really Vale half asleep. After so much good early work in the first 15 minutes of this second half, it all comes to naught and they find themselves in deeper trouble than ever. It had been billed as a, an interesting clash that may well have produced some good football. As it turns out, it's been very busy. Oh, goodness me, an own goal, would you believe it? This is the man chasing him, he's got a bit of pace, and Barber down there. There's a little licked effort there by Robbie Musto. Now picking up Wilkinson. Free kick, Kernahan rolling it out for Gary Parkinson to hit the cross. Wilkinson jumps, gets a touchdown. Off the bar by Moen, and grabbed again by Barber, the header there from Ripley three times Middlesbrough hit the woodwork down at London Road in the first match and already they found it again Parkinson hit the cross deep Wilkinson at the jump Moen was up there onto the bar back for Ripley Barber so quick to recover half an hour gone still it's nil-nil in this quarter-final replay Middlesbrough for all the brightness of their start and that effort from Nicky Moen that hit the bar really managed to put Barber under relentless pressure now Charlie looking to turn here though Charlie from Mick Halsall nearly crept through and still Mike Gavin that's a great save from Stephen Pears and it needed to be from Gavin they picked their way through the Middlesbrough defence then Peter Burke Carefully worked, Halsall, and it fell for Gavin, and a smart save back from Stephen Pears. And Ripley through the middle for a change. There goes Ripley. Could he go all the way, Luke? And Ripley checks. Oh, that is an absolutely marvellous goal from Stuart Ripley. He's been the threatener for Middlesbrough all night long, but he's got and done it single-handed now. That was a marvellous goal. Ripley twisted Luke, turned, didn't really look up, knew where the goal was, and right in that far corner. It's a sensational goal. 
head down that time completely lost Luke with that turn checked and drove it well wider Barber no chance for that one there's a goal right out the blue Bobbling around on the halfway line. Smith with plenty of men forward in this attack, however, as uh, Anderton swings that ball across. Here comes Burns in with a chance, and Whittingham's going to finish it off. And Guy Whittingham gives Portsmouth the lead. Parkinson then with this free kick for Middlesbrough floated in and uh, kept out by Knight at full stretch. That was a good tip over. Again, it's Gary Parkinson. This one lifted towards the edge of that mid Portsmouth penalty area. Some confusion in there, and the equaliser struck by Alan Kernigan with just two minutes to go. Portsmouth won, Middlesbrough won, Kernigan is the saviour. There was the ball from Parkinson. It created confusion, and Kernigan pounced to good effect. Well, Portsmouth then, having had the lead snatched away from them, come again with Chamberlain. He's got support here. It's got to be a good ball in. Seconds left, that's all. Here's the chance, and uh, it's going to be Pears who can't get down to it. The ball must fall for somebody. Martin Kuhl, it trickles wide, and surely now it's going to end in a draw. Another never-say-die display by Borough keeps those cup dreams bubbling. But the big side effect is that progress in both cup competitions has enabled leaders Blackburn to open up a commanding lead at the top of the second division. Kenny Dogleash's multi-million pound outfit have gained a 12-point advantage over Borough, albeit having played two games more. And Lenny Lawrence's men are unable to make up lost ground in front of an Ayrson Park crowd of close on 20,000. Despite a storming second-half display against a ferocious gale, Borough can't quite break the deadlock. Since the new year began, Borough's congested programme had been dominated by cup ties. And the replay with Portsmouth is their sixth in little more than seven weeks. A quarter-final showdown with Nottingham Forest, the prize at stake this time. Jamie Pollock. Good header. Disappointment at the end of it for Wilkinson. Ripley, good pass. Fouled by Beresford. And certainly it's Stuart Ripley who is creating the majority of the problems for the Portsmouth defence. Wilkinson, free kick was quickly taken. Portsmouth were standing unorganised unready and paid the penalty still getting themselves into position when the ball hit the back of the net from Wilkinson's header indirect the arm was raised there was no problem there Ripley that's a better ball Payton did well and so too did Knight it was a very good turn and a powerful shot from Andy Payton. He can pull the two captains together. Musto has missed it. Clark, Anderton. Powell is in the middle. Clark is going. Can he shoot? Yes, and score. Anderton made the opening and Clark drilled it in. And the testing high ball in which uh, Wilkinson loves to compete for. And they're a bit hesitant about getting it away. Ripley's shot hit Pollock. And after that must have struck another Portsmouth player. Mr Hill was very well placed to see. 
So we've got a cup tie full of action. Goal at each end. The prize for the winners, a home tie against Nottingham Forest. Couldn't be more appetising. Moen in there making problems. And Wilkinson coming in at the far post, completely unattended. It was Moen who was causing the problems earlier. And Wilkinson threw himself at the header. But they'll be asking questions about the marking. Orford there before Peyton. Powell back to him. It's just a hopeful ball in, which was relatively easy for Phillips. Anderton has got the wrong side of Moen. Moen is now back. Anderton's beaten him. Oh! That's a wonderful goal by Clark. The number nines are having a birthday. Now here's Anderton with Powell in the middle and the court. And it'll be Anderton with the corner, slicing it outside foot. And it's gone right, right through. I don't think anybody got a touch. Anderton with the outside of the foot. I'm not sure it didn't just go all the way through from Anderton. In from Beresford. Anderton using his weight. And here's Clark for his hat-trick. Against the bar and into the keeper's hands. Neil through the middle for Powell. Anderton! Three days on from that stunning FA Cup exit, Borough face a tough test of character in the league at Swindon. Glenn Hoddle's men begin the day above Borough on goal difference. But the tables are turned by a decisive strike by inspirational skipper Alan Kernigan, back in the side after serving a two-match ban. And it's going to be Phillips, and they will swing that one in, and that's Kernigan at the back post, he's found the corner of the net. Alan Kernigan, as he so often does, pops up to head the ball in from a very difficult angle, and it's Swindon nil, Middlesbrough 1. Here's McLaren, and he'll drive that ball long into the Middlesbrough penalty area where Pierce collects it. The referee's given a penalty. Well, that really is inexplicable. It looked to me as though Calderwood merely ran in. Well, he did, he ran into Kernigan. But the referee has given the penalty. So here is Mickey Hazard with the chance to equalise. Oh, great stop by Pears, and maybe justice has been done. It really wasn't worth a penalty anyway, and Pears makes sure it doesn't count. On a day when runaway leaders Blackburn have faltered at home to lowly Oxford, that's a precious victory. Meanwhile, in the Rumbelows Cup, the Essen Park stage is set for Borough's first semi-final for 16 years. A crowd of nearly 26,000 witnessed a thrilling first leg against first division leaders Manchester United. So Manchester United looking to contain again as Slaven comes in and the ball was knocked away at the last moment there by Gary Pallister. So determined against his old club here to impress. Phillips with this throw in for Middlesbrough. They've given a good account of themselves so far in this first leg, but they'd want a lead to take back to Old Trafford for the second leg with them. Phillips driving it across to Parkinson in some space. He can hit them. He does hit this one. Right to Gore, Schmeichel's expertise to keep it out. This was a cracking effort from the fullback. Parkinson strikes as good a ball as anybody, and the Dane was equal to it. Gary Parkinson really letting fly from fully 35 yards. <laughs> Still Middlesbrough try to lift that crowd of theirs. They've uh, got right behind them and Ripley has found Slaven, edge of the penalty area. Now it's John Hendry. Here comes the deep cross. Wilkinson at the back post. Schmeichel didn't really get there, but Brian Robson gets him out of jail. It was Slaven coming in for it. Hendry had driven it across, Wilkinson rising well, and I thought the goalkeeper was a triumph fortunate. From Webb, 
quickly transferred to Hughes, danger here to the Borough goal, Giggs across the face and Giggs gets a second chance as well, oh a lovely little shimmy from the goal boy, and then it's Hughes who puts the header wide. It's still nil-nil, and Schmeichel clearing the ball long, he's got a good boot on him, Hughes took that down superbly, now Webb threads it through and takes the return ball, looking for someone in the middle here, and there's Ince's header, flipped over the top by Pears, an excellent header from Paul Ince though. Webb had created all of that and then Paul Ince who certainly doesn't get many goals let alone with his head was denied by Pears from Ince down the line for Giggs who checks inside Parkinson finds the supporting Ince this time on the little ball through was confused Berra here's Brian Robson he can tee up Hughes Hughes on the left foot still it might come though Pears smothers it and falls gratefully on the ball that was good work from Brian Robson. Middlesbrough just caught napping for the moment, but Hughes again couldn't beat Pears. Here is Parkinson. Wilkinson and Ripley now. Ripley on brought down. A crunching tackle by Pallister on his old pal. But uh, referee Nixon right on the spot. A free kick to Middlesbrough. Can they get a goal? Can they get one to take to Old Trafford with them for the second leg? Schmeichel. Organising everything that goes on ahead of him. We've seen Parkinson strike one already in this match. It could be him again. It is him and he's got it through as well. And Schmeichel diving and keeping it out. And Wilkinson can't force it through. Schmeichel did well. Parkinson for the second time here thumping the shot in and only the Danes agility thwarted him Paul Parker just about got that ball through for Webb now it's McClair and he's ridden the challenge well McClair and this could be the one no Neil Webb on the left foot he can't believe it himself spooning the chance wide Well, he's urged to keep on going. McClare had done his part so well. You could see the crowd rising in anticipation. Only Neil Webb let them down. Nil-nil it is then. Parkinson's ball in. Is there going to be a late sting in the tail? It's Bernie Slaven. No, Schmeichel able to collect. Disappointing. An inspired performance by Borough, highlighted by a brilliant display by Stephen Fares against his former club, Six years earlier, United had let their reserve keeper move to Ayrson Park for the modest fee of just £70,000. Before the return leg comes the first of two encounters inside ten days against promotion rivals Cambridge United. Tries the left foot shot and bends it. Oh, hits the uh, crossbar. The angle of post and crossbar. Superb shot from Gary Parkinson. And Jimmy Phillips up to uh, swing over the cross. Wilkinson knocks it back. Oh! from three yards Kimball this is Taylor trying to get the cross in Kernigan uh, got the block oh Dublin's there and Dublin scored oh my word it came out of nothing this is Phillips again drives in the cross it must be a goal it's there his 19th goal of the season. So Paul Wilkinson's 19th goal of the season preserves Borough's unbeaten league record at Essen Park. It also means a step up to fourth place in the race to join the Premier League. With the season entering its final quarter, Borough a handily placed with games in hand on all the top three clubs. But cup exploits mean Lenny Lawrence's heroes now face at least two matches a week for the final two months of the season. In the second leg of their Rumbelows Cup semi-final, Borough arrive at Old Trafford for their 14th cup tie of the season. And a passionate crowd of nearly 46,000 is in for an absorbing contest. 
Just over the crossbar from Paul Wilkinson. Who caused Manchester United all manner of problems, particularly in the first half of the first leg. Hendry just managed to wriggle away from Irwin there. And Wilkinson stole a march on everybody else in the penalty area. Paul Ince. Ryan Robson. Webb has made a run to his left. Kicks ahead of him. McClare. Now Webb. Now Lee Sharp. Real chance. He's back. and Slaven, who were both well placed. Slaven letting Pollock know it. Jimmy Phillips. Robbie Musto. Jamie Pollock. Curtis Fleming tiptoeing forward. Slaven! Well, he was allowed the opportunity. And Bernie Slaven certainly has an eye for goal. He's been Middlesbrough's leading scorer of the last five seasons. It was a long-range header. Here goes Stuart Ripley. Parker trying to stick with him. Ripley is strong enough. Chance for Slaven! Five minutes of the second half gone. And Middlesbrough are back in business. Slaven's equaliser starts a party behind Peter Schmeichel's goal. You can't allow him a side of goal. Four marks to Stuart Ripley, so strong, and the cross picked out by Slaven, who picked out the back of the net. Bernie Slaven's 14th goal of the season. The most precious in Middlesbrough's season so far. 1-1. One, one. Paul Ince, Brian Robson, Lee Sharp. Not quite what he intended. He's got another chance though. Trying to play Dennis Irwin in. Brian McClare trying to play Dennis Irwin in. Oh, good save by Pears. Cleared by Kernigan. Smart stop by the Millsburg goalkeeper. Dennis Irwin cutting through the Middlesbrough for defence, bearing down on Pears, who made a really good save. Quickly down to his left. Ryan kicks. Cleared by Kernigan. Wilkinson in pursuit. Palace from Bruce with him. Gary Pallister saw Michael Short. Wilkinson managed to force it past the goalkeeper, but not far enough past the goalkeeper. And Pallister gets away with the back pass. Wilkinson's header off. Hendry trying to get to it. Schmeichel committed. Hendry goalwards off the line by Gary Pallister. Saves Manchester United's bacon with a dramatic goal-line clearance from John Hendry. The gates of Wembley were opening wide for Middlesbrough then, but Gary Pallister got it across in the nick of time to shut them in their face. 
Inch was calling for it, but not there. Kernigan leading the breakout. Wilkinson. Pollock. Kernigan still forward. Space here for Bernie Slaven. Falconer, Kernigan, and Wilkinson in the box. It's Willie Falconer! Oh, Wilkinson was so much better placed. Falconer threw himself on it. He had no time to stop and look around him, but just look where Paul Wilkinson was beyond him. Only once in their history of middles from made it to Wembley. 35,000 for them south to the Zenith final two years ago. Only for Chelsea to score the party. Goodness knows how many would travel for an emotional reunion with Brian Clough on April the 12th. It's still possible. This semi-final being played to constant vocal accompaniment and encouragement. And it's keeping the players going. Brian Robson getting more and more irritated. Pallister. Hendry. Falcon awaiting. Got his head to it. Good save by Michael. Just managed to smuggle it away from Wilkinson. But what a start from Willie Falcon up. But how on earth did Willie Falconer from a standing star get so much power behind his header? And how on earth did Peter Schmeichel get to it? And it wasn't over there and he had to get across to deny Wilkinson. It was difficult to believe that Manchester United and Middlesbrough could serve up anything quite as good as Forrest and Spurs managed ten days ago. But in a different way, this has been every bit the measure of it. It's not been the same kind of flowing football match, but it's been more of a semi-final. A classic slugging match. Neil Webb. McClare's there, so too is Robson. It's Giggs! That could be the one! So Borough destined not to complete the road to Wembley. They'd played their part in a thrilling cup tie pack with drama, entertainment and skill. And now their cup adventures were finally over. It was time to concentrate on the final push for a place in the Premier League. The crucial breakthrough against South End came on the hour when homekeeper Paul Sanson brought John Henry crashing in the box. A red card meant both sides were down to ten men. Jimmy Phillips had received his marching orders minutes earlier. But Bernie Slaven made Southend pay with the winner from the penalty spot. Three days later comes another close encounter with promotion rivals Cambridge. Cambridge really do batter their opponents. A flick on from Dublin and Pears took it off the bar. Swung in again, Dublin chesting it down, here's Cambridge, brilliant stop from Pears. Ledbitter coming through, Ledbitter still here, this is a good chance and Pears defies him. Still, John Beck's side looking for this first goal, Dublin the flick on, Dennis the header, Pears the save. Slaven for Middlesbrough, oh and that's put over the top from Hendry. This is Dennis's corner. Cambridge still looking for this elusive first goal. The ball knocked out. Oh, what a fine stop by Pears. He really is in magnificent form in this match. It was no more than a half chance. Pears kept it out again. A goalless draw means Borough have extended their unbeaten league run to six matches. After three matches on the road, it's finally back to Ayrson Park for the home encounter with struggling Brighton. Borough really looking to boost their promotion chances in this game and that one swung across and Slaven from no more than five yards out, it's Bernie Slaven. Hendry, right, not quite sure where to go at the moment, here's Wilkinson's header and Slaven simply had to score. Phillips. Back for John Hendry, who swerves one in. Oh, that's a superb strike from Hendry. Oh, 
Brighton put under pressure again. There's Young Monday, the full back, and he's beaten by Slaven on the outside. And Slaven is brought down by Monday as well, as if to compound his error. The penalty kick. And no doubt about it, Monday really, he'd missed the ball in the first place, and then he brought down the Irishman as well. Slaven for the hat trick, and it is a hat trick. 4 0. Well, Bernie Slaven's hat trick had earned him the man of the match award against Brighton. There was no doubt who the hero was against Charlton. Just six days after a cheekbone operation, goalkeeper Stephen Pears amazed everyone by declaring himself fit to play at Upton Park. He certainly amazed Charlton with a brilliant performance to claim his fourth clean sheet in a row. Four days later comes another tricky promotion encounter that produces a sparkling advert for second division football. Leicester who played except for one wide flicking it on. This is Pilgy brought down. That's a penalty brought down by Nicky Mullen. We're just three minutes into this game and Leicester City have a penalty. Can he celebrate it with a goal against Steve Pears, who was brought into the England squad last week? And it's there. 1-0, Mills scores, peak, trying to find Ripley again, does so this time, Lee Faulkner's made the run, Ripley comes in with a shot, oh what a shot that was, he really does tank them when he lets go, and Kevin Poole got down magnificently to turn the ball away for a corner, but that was a rasping shot from Stuart Ripley, ahead of Thompson Pollock oh what a shot from Jamie Pollock the Leicester City defence are absolutely stunned the Middlesbrough fans can't believe it he must have hit that from 30 yards Jamie Pollock he was only 18 in February this is 20th league appearance and he cracks in an unstoppable shot that I doubt whether Kevin Poole actually saw it Wilkinson's header, Ripley, oh, Slaven rather, trying some ball juggling, this is Mills, Thompson, nicely out to Grayson on the right hand side, the big men in the middle, the header coming in, oh it's off the post, Phil G got the header in, but it's still in play, back it comes again, away by Henry, Slaven, Wilkinson and he's uh, trying to outrun the big man Walsh but how unlucky can you get Phil G so close to his second goal then looking for Ormond Royd he got it that time nice touch inside to Mills maybe the shot's on here oh what a jump from Mills I thought that was going in but Steve Pears just re well, his reaction was superb. Just put up his left arm and picked the ball over. Gary Mills. Oh, he's come through and it's there! Tommy Wright! His 14th goal of the season. Gary Mills it was, who crossed from the left. The defenders missed it. And there was Tommy Wright popping up to make it Leicester City 2, Middlesbrough 1. Defeat at Filbert Street is followed by a home encounter within four Watford that comes to life at the start of the second half. Dean Holdsworth gets the ball rolling when he gives Watford the lead. 60 seconds later it's all square. Bernie Slaven's shot is blocked by David James and Paul Wilkinson follows up to claim his 20th goal of the season. drama results in a disappointing end to Borough's 22 match unbeaten league record at Ayrson Park when Steve Butler lands the winner. Remarkably that's three wins in a row for Watford on Middlesbrough's home soil.
After two straight defeats, Borough badly needed a positive show of form away from home. And the omens look promising when John Henby makes an early breakthrough at Ashton Gate. Bristol had dealt another blow when Lero Rossinia is sent off at the end of the first half. The ten-man city comes storming back after the break and it's no surprise when the home side had the final say with an equaliser from Cole. <laughs> Jimmy Phillips, dramatic late winner, sealed three precious points for Borough. But the bad news is that skipper Alan Kernigan will miss the rest of the season. And it's a goal to Middlesbrough. And it's that number seven shirt. Mark Proctor, who would have been on the sub bench tonight if Bernie Slaven would have been fit. And Middlesbrough have struck first blood. And chased by Nolan. Looks for Wilkinson. Nixon's ball. Releases Thomas. Good ball by Thomas. Malkin across. Muir! Jimmy Phillips has put Middlesbrough ahead. And they've taken the lead. But rather foolishly, Paul Wilkinson tried to kick the ball out the ground and is going to get the first yellow card of the evening. As Jimmy Phillips beats Eric Nixon, ball ends up from the free kick. With all but two of Borough's final seven matches at Ayrson Park, Next comes a precious run of three home games in seven days. But nothing is simple at this stage of the season. Here's Phillips. Oh, that's well struck and Butler equal to it. Fleming this time. He's got support in the penalty area and here comes Proctor. How unlucky. Barnsley's turn to come with David Curry. Such a darling up here at Ayrson Park in his days with Middlesbrough and support arriving in that penalty box and here's Neil Redford and it's 1-0 for Barnsley, a stunner Fleming again, hits the longer ball this time oh that's a lovely little turn from Hendry and he's wriggling between the defenders and he's still here, tenacity wins the day for him Ripley with a chance to tee him up and there's the return ball, Redford couldn't get there Wilkinson couldn't either, there's the stop from Butler brilliantly done by Butler the second time as well So, Burroughs' promotion hopes evaporating a little as Ripley fires this one in. Another brilliant stop by Butler. Well, he really is earning his corner, the Barnsley goalkeeper. Superbly saved. Oxford looking with Magilton here and the shots are coming in oh and it looped up Proctor and over pairs so Middlesbrough really up against it they need the points so badly if they're to make it into that uh, Premier League next season Wilkinson holding things up nicely until uh, Ripley is there to take the return ball he just loves to run at them does uh, Ripley oh not only run at them First venomous strike from Stuart Ripley is one of the goals of the season. A corker from Ripley. Still 1-1, more pressure from Oxford. The ball cleared as far as Slaven, and then knocked forward by Proctor. And here's a chase off Clayton, brought down so badly by Penny. Slaven's continuing, but the whistle has gone. So it doesn't matter what really happens inside that penalty area now. The whistle has already gone. And this is why Proctor nodded the ball forward. Peyton tried to turn Penny just inside his own half, and Penny is sent off. So a free kick then for Middlesbrough. 
Ball laid forward, a nice little flick back, and Andy Payton is in! Payton, 2-1 for Middlesbrough, they were behind, they drew level, and they're now in front, and that was really quick thinking and instinctive striking from Andy Payton. The points just as precious for Plymouth, of course, today as the ball is swung over here to Steve McCall. Good-looking ball in, and an even better header from Dwight Marshall, and it's 1-0 for Plymouth Argyle. So, from the hands of the old master, Peter Shilton. It's going to fall for Hendry, however. He uh, just relishes taking on defenders, and he's got between them as well. That's really good play, and here's Ripley! And the side foot is good enough to beat Chilton. 1-1. Payton, and now Falconer, out uh, for so much of this season through injury, Willie Falconer. He's threaded a lovely ball through towards Slaven. And uh, the ball really bobbling around. It comes back again to Falconer, who tries one with the left foot. What a shot. It dipped and it fairly flew past Chilton. Willie Falconer, 2-1 to Middlesbrough. And this is a really spectacular effort from the former Aberdeen man. Beautifully done. Victory has lifted Lenny Lawrence's men into third spot. Three points behind second place Leicester, with a game in hand. Easter Monday takes Middlesbrough to Roker Park, in front of a bumper bank holiday crowd of over 25,000. It's 0-0. Sunderland in possession. A long, long ball from Samson, and it's found Devonport! Brilliantly struck by Peter Davenport. And he sunk his old team with that one. Pears with a quick thinking clearance. And, uh, snapped up in midfield for uh, Burra here. And that's got to be a free kick. And it is. And it's quickly taken. Equally quick thinking as well. And Hendry's cross is a good one. Here comes Ripley. Well kept out by Tony Norman. Burra's corner. Hendry will flight it in, and there's the header, and Gittins has got there, and Norman's got there too. After the supercharged atmosphere at Roker Park, it's back home for the clash of Bristol Rovers, and remarkably for the fifth consecutive match, Borough find themselves conceding the first goal. Five minutes gone, the crowd's so expectant of Middlesbrough, but they might be caught out here. Here's John Taylor, the former Cambridge striker, and on the left foot, he's given Bristol Rovers a shot lead. Still the Middlesbrough trail with Fleming's throw in. It's going to come all the way back to him. Curtis Fleming looking for a good ball in, and it's not a bad one either. Ripley with the header over the top. He should have hit the target. From Phillips to Ripley. He'll be surrounded as always by Bristol defenders. Still manages to thread it in here for Payton. Good effort. Brian Parkin down to it. Brave stop. So Parkins' clearance will land inside the Middlesbrough half. Well, John Taylor's away again here. And uh, Bristol Rowers, well, Borough certainly can't afford to concede a second goal. And Pears all unlucky for Bristol. Off the upright. So if Borough were expecting an easy ride today, they certainly haven't got one. Bristol Rowers making them fight every inch of the way. Here's Ripley now. Again, the Borough crowd really urging their side on. They so badly want an equaliser. It's the leading scorer, Paul Wilkinson. Now, controversy here because the Bristol defenders claim that Wilkinson has used his hand. Well, was it a la Maradona? We can see from this, well, <coughs> maybe. Free kick for Middlesbrough. And, uh, good position taken up by Slaven inside that uh, Bristol Rovers area. Here's Hendry's shot. There's nothing wrong with that one. And it's Paul Wilkinson for the second time. Two for Borough, two for Paul Wilkinson. And they take the lead for the first time in the match. Hendry's cross, Wilkinson's punishing header. Victory over Bristol Rovers has guaranteed Borough will go into the final Saturday of the season with a chance of securing automatic promotion. Whether or not they'll start the day in pole position depends on the outcome of the season's final home match against Grimsby Town. The ball played into the box, nodded out by Jobling. And Woods can't get it any further away, really, so Fleming 
keeps them ticking, Hendry inside the area and is brought down by Jobling and that is a penalty, referee Dilks, no doubt at all about it, Jobling the offender, Hendry the player who was brought down after that pass from Fleming and Middlesbrough have got a golden opportunity to take the lead here. It'll be Jimmy Phillips against Reese and no problems at all, it's 1-0, Jimmy Phillips the scorer. The perfect penalty, he just stroked it home. Still 1-0, Middlesbrough in the lead. Grimsby desperate for points as well to guarantee second division survival. Fudge's back passes left to Peyton in. Well, that's disappointing for Andy Payton into the side netting. Well, Reese's clearance has gone straight to Ripley here. Not at all what he was looking for. And it means that Grimsby have got to, a lot of work to do now as Ripley seeks to uh, get the cross in. It's a good deep cross as well. It's the perfect cross and the perfect finish from the former Grimsby man, Paul Wilkinson. A fascinating season was always destined for a nail-biting finish and the fourth home win inside a fortnight then Borough began the final Saturday in that precious automatic promotion place. It was still a three-way contest with Leicester City of Derby County for the all-important runners-up prize. The victory over Wolves would mean certain promotion for Borough. The match went ahead despite an overnight arson attack and the outcome was an afternoon of high drama. It really has been an in-and-out season for Wolves, quite safe uh, from the relegation, but no chance of going into the Premier League. That ball is through to Steve Ball, puts it wide. It's not been his most prolific season, but he'll always have a go. Burke, former Middlesbrough player, of course, Burke. And, uh, rolls that one inside for Paul Cook, and Burke just flicked back, and here is Cook! And, well, it could have gone in. Pollock with the free kick, it's going to come all the way back to him as well, and Pollock on the left foot, well he thumped that one in, from Gittins this time, Phillips who's had such a good season for Middlesbrough, and he pings these balls in with uh, an airing accuracy, down from Wilkinson, off the crossbar, Wilkinson tried to volley it in, and Wolves have come away unscathed. Well, real drama in the Wolverhampton penalty box here. I thought that Wilkinson twice might have got in. His was the header down in the first instance. Falconer couldn't follow through, neither could Wilkinson. It's still nil-nil. Middlesbrough enjoying their share of attacking moments in the game as they do now, and Wilkinson rifles the shot in. It may even have flicked the crossbar, that one, on its way over. Ashley throwing for Wolves this time. Ball didn't control it, but it's still spun away for Birch, and that's a lovely ball played by Birch. And the goalkeeper Ironside had to be very agile. There's so much at stake for Middlesbrough when you think they've been in the second division for the last three years, but they're under pressure. And uh, Wilkinson and Madden, and Madden's challenge on Wilkinson produces the free kick. Referee Don who will shortly be in charge of the cup final, of course. Firm in his decision, Laurie Madden there. And uh, he wrestled Wilkinson to the ground. Did it happen inside or outside? Lenny Lawrence looks and wants the penalty, but the referee has given the free kick. Can Phillips do anything with it? Can Ripley do something? They are the two central figures here. Could be Phillips with the left foot. It is indeed, and he's clipped it, and he's clipped it over. Disappointing finish. So, are we heading for a goalless draw? Can Middlesbrough still snatch the victory that would guarantee them a place in the Premier Division? They're under pressure again as Cook hoists the ball forward. It'll fall here for Birch. Borough still living dangerously, Bull got the shot in, and then he remonstrates with Pollock. Pollock went across the Bull there, the Wolf striker, took an instant dislike to that and Nicky Moen has been pulled out by referee Don as well Paul Cook seems to be the one who is arguing more furiously than anybody well Bull had to go for the shot no question about that the England striker furious about Pollock's intervention and then Moen has wrestled his way around the field with Cook 
Cook gets a yellow card, but let's not forget that Mullins already had a yellow. He's got a red now. And Middlesbrough must play out the rest of the game with ten men. A second bookable offence, and Mullins is off. Still no goals in the game. Cook again involved for Wolves, swings the ball across, and Andy Butch has given Wolves the lead, and a priceless lead it may turn out to be as well. Hendry, Middlesbrough desperate for an equaliser in this match now. There's the firm header which the keeper has kept out, and it's Gittins who forces it through. And John Gittins, the man from Swindon, has got Middlesbrough back in it. Hendry's corner, and John Gittins, the tall defender, gets in after Falconer's header to force the ball through. So it's the Middlesbrough fans who are elated again. They can see that dream of Premier League football now coming closer and closer. Lenny Lawrence is on the pitch, talking to Jimmy Phillips, talking him through these closing moments of the game. Ideally, they would like a winner, though. They come again. Peyton can't get there. Wilkinson slides it away for Ripley, who's had such an excellent season for Middlesbrough. Ripley's ball inside. Is this going to be a second opportunity for Middlesbrough? Could they win it here? They could! It's in off the upright! And a winning goal from Paul Wilkinson. It had to be him. It really did. Wilkinson has had a wonderful season for Middlesbrough. And his glancing header, surely now, Lenny Lawrence knows his team is on their way through. This was the run that created the damage. Excellent work indeed there by Pollock. Wilkinson rounds it off, Middlesbrough are on their way up. They know it. And after three years of second division football, Middlesbrough seem destined now for the Premier League. That's it. The final whistle sounds, jubilation on Teesside, jubilation for all the Middlesbrough players, and what a dream start to his managerial career at Ayrson Park for Lenny Lawrence. He's the man who's taken Middlesbrough up. They've won here at Wolves by two goals to one. Slaven and Wilkinson got the goals after they'd been a goal behind. He has a right to raise his fist in salute. The dream has come true for Middlesbrough, who now find themselves back at the top of English football and in the Premier League next season. Well done to Lenny Lawrence and well done to Middlesbrough. So scenes of jubilation for Middlesbrough fans at the end of a long, hard season. Victory over Wolves has secured the runners-up prize and the all-important reward of automatic promotion. things have maybe gone against us with having Nicky sent off without a penalty we thought we deserved turned down and uh, you know we kept going at it even though we we're down to 10 men to score twice down to 10 men in the last 20 minutes was brilliant yes! I mean after last season when it was only the playoffs I mean this season it must mean twice as much to you oh yeah twice as much pressure as well but the, the lads handled it today and the fans were superb as usual and they get into the season. You've been up, you've been down, you've been up, you've been down, up again the last few years. This time you're going to stay up. Well, that's what we stay up, man. Uh, I'm, I'm sure we can. I'm we'll sure we can. Yeah, sure. Sure. Thanks a lot. Hey, Lenny! Hey, Lenny! Hey, Lenny!
fantastic scenes now. There must have been a time during the game when you really thought you wouldn't be celebrating. No, I mean, uh, there's a way it turned out. I mean, it's ending off was a turning point for us. Uh, they scored, but I mean, it sort of seems to spot us on. And once we get a first goal on, I mean, we, we pulled everything out of the bag we did. Absolutely delighted. Well, after coming so close last season to actually get there this season, it must mean twice as much. Especially so. I mean, it's always better to go straight up rather than get into the playoffs. I mean, it's nerve wracking, what have you. Yeah, as you say, I mean, it's twice as much. But overall, we've played 60 games this year and uh, we've had a trem tremendous season. Well, you've seen some ups and downs at Middlesbrough. This must be one of the best ups that you've seen so far. Uh, exactly. I, I came back uh, the last six weeks of the first season and unfortunately we were relegated on the last day of the season. That's uh, ironic now I'm coming to the end of my contract and we've managed to get back up where we were when I first came, so it's, I just can't explain, you know, it's fantastic. Amazing last five or six years, so many ups, so many downs for the borough. That's right, yeah, I mean, we've, we've tended to keep all the supporters uh, hanging on in some way, either relegation, we need to win the last game, or promotion or something, so you, they've had plenty of excitement, but uh, it's really nice to finish on a high note today, especially with, you know, magnificent support down again, and as I say, we're back in the Premier Division. A look at the final table confirms that Borough finished four points behind champions Ipswich Town, but two points clear of Derby County, who would have gone up had Borough slipped up against Wolves, Derby beating Swindon Town in their final match. Winning a place in the new Premier League was a fitting reward for a side that shone in all three major domestic competitions. It was also a great personal achievement for Lenny Lawrence in his first season in charge at Ayrson Park. Borough had enjoyed one of their best seasons ever and the supporters rightly gave their heroes a glorious welcome home. There was no silverware to complete the party but plenty of memories from an action-packed season full of magic moments. The team on the field is what you see every week and certainly um, they've shown from the, the, the togetherness, the spirit that sometimes uh, you need that little bit extra. You saw that in the last few games, especially the last game, when everything seems lost and the chips are down. That's when you need to dig really deep. And you don't often get that with a group of players, and sometimes it doesn't last very long. We've got it. And we've got to keep it, and we've got to build on it, and hopefully that can take us forward to success in the Premier League.